Oh, hi, Sonic. We're just starting the show. Welcome. Welcome aboard, matey. Get ready for adventure. Welcome aboard, fans of adventure. Welcome aboard, seekers of mystery. Welcome aboard, fellow pirates, to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Cap'n Raz. Wow, it's been a long week. A lot of fun this week. A lot of adventure. And the clock didn't last long. What a shock. All right. Um, yeah, long week. Uh, this week on the voyage, we're making our way out to the kingdom of Malice. Now, that's not Malice as in, like, uh, hatred. Uh, that's Malice as in, uh, M-A-L-U-S. Maybe Malus? Who knows? Uh, but we're gonna be playing King of Dragons for the Super Nintendo, a game that has been long sitting in the hold, awaiting its time in the sun. Uh, we're also going to be digging into the chest. You know, uh, in the promo, I believe I said uh, the chest holds a horde worthy of song. I may have oversold it. Just saying. But we'll get to that at the bottom of the hour. By the way, what time is it? Uh, okay, so we're 35. Okay, I think I got it. Um, and then, of course, uh, we'll be addressing your comments, questions, and concerns. In the bag that tells no tales, our mailbag segment. I know a lot of you out there on Twitch are like, why aren't you talking to me? It's because we talk at the end of the show, you see? So if you have a question or a comment or concern, please feel free to leave it live and we will magically get it here in the mailbag. So that's it. Uh, let's get started. I want to talk to you about the adventure that really inspired uh, today's voyage. King of Dragons, I was lucky enough to go to a very special place in a little town called Schaumburg, Illinois, thanks to my dear sweet sister. She came up with the brilliant idea of packing everyone into the car and driving to the northern suburbs of Chicago to visit a little place called Medieval Times Dinner and Festivities. Now, I'm sure you've at least heard of Medieval Times. There's maybe uh, six or seven in uh, the country. I'm not sure if they're uh, across the pond. But here in America, we have Medieval Times. I think it, it's probably most known for uh, the cable guy with Jim Carrey. Uh, him, uh, he, he takes uh, Matthew Broderick to Medieval Times. Hilarious scene. If you haven't seen that, I highly suggest it. Um, and I highly suggest Medieval Times Dinner and Festivities itself. I think it's around 16 bucks a person, something like that, maybe even less. And uh, if you get a group rate, you can probably get a good deal, which is what we got. I think there were about six of us, uh, ranging anywhere from my father, who's, uh, you know, whatever age he is, <laughs> to my, uh, my young nephew, who's uh, somewhere around three. And... Um, it was it was a blast. You basically show up at a castle, surrounded by a parking lot next to a highway, but it's a castle, and uh, you show up there. I don't know, maybe about an hour before the the performance, and you walk in, and there's like a green screen where you can get your picture taken with everybody else for a you know small fee. This is kind of one of those nickel and dime kind of places. You come for the movie, but, you know, you got to pay extra for the popcorn, that kind of scenario. Um, and, you know, you can do things like uh, you can have a wizard duel with your friend in front of the green screen. And you can stand in front of the knights, uh, you know, in, in the arena, that kind of silly stuff. Uh, there's stuff like, there's typical Renaissance fair 
you know, things that you can buy, swords, uh, axes, um, you can buy drinks, they had things like the magical margarita, uh, you know, they had domestics, whatever, you could bu buy it in like a fancy glass, and I actually tried mead for the first time. I believe mead is made from honey, and it, they, they, they serve it to you in a wine glass, and it, it was either like nine, you could get either six ounces or nine ounces. And I wasn't really sure what I was getting into here. It sounded almost like a, like a hard liquor kind of thing. Uh, but what it turned out to be was like a more potent wine. And you'd be sipping on it and it, it really uh, did the job. It certainly did the job. Got me in the mood to be in this this strange place. There was like a dungeon that you had to pay an extra two dollars um, to get into. What else was there? We didn't do that. There, you could see the horses. The horses were stabled. Uh, but then, you know, finally, the procession, the king and the princess and the captain of the guard show up. They introduce you to, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole uh, festivities here. And then you're all filed into the main arena. And I, this this is pretty typical of what you would assume uh, a jousting arena would look like. There's sand in the middle, and then there's raised seats all around you. And you, you sit down, and there's plates. They're like they they look pewter. I'm sure they're not pewter, but they look like they're you know almost silverish plates. And you've all been given like these paper crowns like you get at the Burger King. But as you look around the arena, you see that there are six different colored seating sections. And everyone has their respective colored paper crowns on. And in our case, we got the red and the yellow crown. Red and yellow, so two colors for us. Across the section, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how, that, how long that would be, 100 feet across from us, we could see the black and white section. And then on the other sides, on our, our left and right, there was the green side, the blue side, who we were somehow affiliated with. And then the other side had uh, the black and white knights, and then they had the red knight and the yellow knight. And I don't know if it was the mead talking or my sense of, of camaraderie and spirit, but I started bellowing you know, out um, disparaging remarks to the other uh, sections, I would say things like, uh, you know, the men of the black and white night wear women's brassieres. You know, or I'd say things like, uh, the yellow knight has pee pee breath. Just at the top of my lungs, as soon as I got started, I knew I was going to lose my voice. Um, but, I, you know, you, you kind of get in the moment and, uh, what can I say? It, it was it was a lot of fun. Finally, the the other knights came out. The knights started coming out, and they started doing things like uh, there was like horse tricks. The horses would bow to the, the the audience, and as they were doing this, then the waiters and waitresses started, or the the the, the what would that be? The serfs? I have no idea. Uh, they they started pouring tomato soup into your bowl. And the bowls had no silverware. They didn't have silverware in medieval times, of course. So you had to, there was like a handle on the soup. You would drink the soup. There was some bread. Uh, it was very good. And it was really, you know, you're, 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 you know, you're sipping on soup and you're screaming at, at, you know, your respective knight, all in the hopes that he is the knight of the day. He wins the competition. Um, the rest of the course, the, the food was great. They, the next course was like half a rotisserie chicken. And again, no no uh, silverware here. So you're just like gnawing on, you know, the breast of the chicken. You're tearing it apart. Uh, what else was there? was like a potato, very nice seasoned potato. No, uh, no skin on it, so you could just gnaw on it. Uh, some corn, which I thought was fine, but everyone else for some reason felt the corn was too wilted. I mean, geez, it's the dark ages, people, you know. I, how perfect do you want it to be? Um, and then there was like a pastry. 
the pastry of the castle, which was like kind of a an apple turnover, if you will. Um, so it was. We walked out of there quite full. Uh, my my throat was just gone, absolutely gone. Uh, we I don't know how, but of the six nights, the red and yellow night won the competition. So that was extra special. We were sitting in the front row. We paid a couple extra dollars extra to do that. Uh, so all in all, a very memorable um, event. I highly suggest it to any of you. And when when I walked out of there, I thought, well, we should certainly do some sort of show based on it. I was thinking of doing Defender of the Crown for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System and the Game Boy Advance. I was going to do it on Game Boy Advance because how often do we do a Game Boy Advance game? And the port is um, relatively competent. But this, the Defender of the Crown is a game based on, like, a Commodore 64 game. So, while it's fun, it's brutally hard. And more importantly, there's a lot of text and a lot of repeat stuff. And I just felt like it might be a slow adventure if we were to do that. So, I pulled King of Dragons, a game we've been wanting to play for a long, long time. Let's get into it. It's King of Dragons for the Super Nintendo. Uh, very underrated in my opinion, and it's time it gets its day. So let's get to it. It's King of Dragons for the Super Nintendo. Oh, allow me to, uh, allow me to don the harp of transition for you. Okay, let's get started. Play about 10 minutes of King of Dragons, and then we'll come back to the booty segment. See what's in the chest. You getting video? And, uh, I've got this paused right into the action let's get started I'll get my headphones on here all right and we're in it oh man it's so nice to be playing this again all right so this this is you know another one of those Super Nintendo games made by Capcom that costs way too much uh, you're gonna be paying more than you would pay for a new release PlayStation 4 game to get just the card of this baby uh, I was lucky enough years, a couple years back, to walk into someone's garage sale, and I, I I wasn't even looking for garage sales. I think I was on my way to the supermarket, and they just happened to be on the road on the way. And sitting there was a Tupperware filled with a Super Nintendo oh Super Nintendo Mini. The, the the second generation Super Nintendo and like around 30 games and there were some good ones there was like oh my god I'm not doing well I know I can do better than this there was like Super Castlevania in there Legend of the Mystical Ninja but when I saw this one I really got elated because this is one that I, I've, I've never seen in person until we, I found it and I always wanted to play it. Uh, there is a cheaper way to play it. We'll get into that later, but this is really the best way to play this game. And the, the main reason that I say that is... All right, we got the Orc King. You'll see these, these levels are really fast, really down and dirty. Got some gold here, and we even get a new shield. And you'll see the shield actually changes into what we pick up. Uh, but this is the re this is the way to play this game because this is the only version of King of Dragons. There were two versions. Other than this, there's you know you can play, got you know, <laughs> good luck. But you can play it in oh they made an arcade cabinet of this, and then the, it's also on. Uh, Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2 for the PlayStation 2 and I believe that was on the Xbox as well, the original Xbox. Uh, but this is the version to play and the reason is is the, uh, the arcade version was 3 player, this is 2 player and that's cool. However, it had this really ridiculous way to block. You basically had have to anticipate when the, your enemy's go, going to swing, and then press back on the directional pad or the joystick to block. So it's very timing. It, I don't know. Oh, I think that was health. 
It's very timing based. And you really don't want that. This game is unforgiving enough. So the Super Nintendo version, to my delight when I finally played it, ugh, it has an option for you to map the shields. Ugh. See, and I'm not shielding right. Ugh. There we go, that's better. It has an option to map that, that shield button, or that shield move, to a button. And that's all the difference, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm not doing very well. Oof. Now you see, I'm playing the cleric. And this is just your typical beat-em-up. You know, there's really two beat-em-ups that people go on and on about on the Super Nintendo, and it's Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, which, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that's not well deserved because it is that's an incredible incredible beat em up probably the best in the system uh but then they also talk about a capcom beat em up called knights of the round knights of the round stars king arthur and percival and lancelot as the three playable characters and people talk about that one it's got leveling you get new gear, um, you know, oh, you can you can fight on horseback, that's a cool feature. But personally, but no one talks about this game, and I don't understand why it costs around the same, same price as Knights of the Round, it's hard to find, in demand, but it gets little to no exposure. Oh, we're dropping. And I, I fail to see why, because this is the one. When I looked at, when I when I dream, you know, when I saw this pictures of this one, I saw pictures of the Knights of the Round. When I played this one on Capcom Classics Collection, and I played Knights of the Round on Capcom Classics Collection, they, I mean, in my opinion, there's no contest. And the main reason for this is is a main feature you're not going to see on this voyage. And it's the fact that there are five characters to choose from and they all play vastly different all right well not vastly but enough to make it interesting certainly more than most of your your typical um beat em ups even more so than than turtles in time i would say i would venture to say there we go now i'm starting to get a hang of, of the shielding so uh what are your kit now another thing here you see this gold you know, most of these beat em ups, there's gold and diamonds to pick up. But here it's very important, and I'll show you why. In the upper left hand corner here, you can see my score, but my score isn't score, it's EP. It's experience. So, experience comes into play because you, the more you get, just like in Dungeons and Dragons or an RPG, you really do level up, and you get more hit points back. So leveling up is like critical in this. So every piece of uh, every gold, every piece of bag of gold, every bauble or gem you come across is really important to pick up and really worth your time. It's not just some arbitrary number. I think that's really cool, and I don't think that's something that Knights of the Round has. Uh, but I could be wrong. I know that that's experience based also. But the reason I would put this game over Knights of the Round is everybody, there's five characters here, so you're already getting two more characters. Ugh. And they just, they play very differently from one another. Now I'm playing the Cleric. I always like to play, uh, kind of, uh, Men of God kind of stuff. And that's basically what a Cleric is. They can't use, um edged weapons for whatever reason that's just kind of a faith based thing and they tend to be healers now the cleric in this it could not be a more basic way to represent a cleric uh, his, his main cool power is if you're playing with two players you gotta wear an ear 
you're playing two players and I pick I as a cleric pick up like a strawberry or a piece of bread or something it'll heal me but it'll also have the chance to heal my my partner as well so I'm the only only character who can do that and when you get into the other characters you've got the fighter he jumps better than I do for one. Oh, I also level very well I'm I, I've got probably a, I've got a high defense and I I level faster than anyone else in the game so if we were playing with like a wizard right now he'd probably be like level 2 or level 3 whereas I'm level 4 at the moment another nice advantage oh I knew that was coming too why didn't I block that because you're a noob that's why Ooh, that was close. Ooh! Playing with fire. Oh, uh, no pun intended. So what other classes? You got, uh, you got the fighter who can jump farther, a little more agile, certainly the all-arounder, uh, good attack, probably, f probably a better attacker than the, the cleric. Uh, but he, you know, he, he doesn't level as fast. And he, he doesn't do that heal thing. He's pretty much out for himself. You got... Ugh. You got the elf. Oh my god, there's no way. You got the elf who has uh, a bow and arrow. And that's really neat because he, he can actually shoot from a distance. And as he levels up, he'll shoot even he can shoot even farther away from even farther distances. He's got a he's he's very he can jump very far, so he can get himself out of danger, but he can't block. Which is, you know, for me a big deal. Ugh. You would think it's not a big deal since I'm sucking at it. I should have played the stupid archer. I'm so out of practice with the shield. You're- Oh, no! That sucked. Uh, so yeah, the, the elf is definitely a, a fun character to play. Almost makes this a run and gunner. Very differently different from what, what we're doing. Alright, I think we're going to leave this here. We'll stop there at the Warren. Can I pause now? Let's get to our next destination. And then we'll come back. We'll see what we got sitting in the booty segment. Alright, the Cave of Hydra is next. That sounds exciting. Alright, so we're coming back here. Oh man. The sun is really beating down on the ship today. It's like an oven, you know. When we have our winter voyages, you can almost, sometimes I'll feel the, the ice dripping down on my head and uh, I'm like chilly, you know, I'm bundled up, I usually have a vest on and I'm thinking about, you know, these hot, hot months. Now I feel like I'm in an oven. It's, uh, it's hot and sticky, baby. Okay, uh, let's get the harbor transition going here. Way late. <laughs> Way late. So that's uh, that's King of Dragons for now. As you can see, it's pretty basic stuff. But that's what's great about you know these kind of games. These are the games that you will pop in for half an hour before dinner, or you know uh, before you got to go to bed, and play and just have a good brainless time. I can't get enough of, of King of Dragons. And obviously, it's even better when you have a friend playing along. And with five different characters, with five different styles, we'll talk about the other classes later. Uh, the, you know, the mixing and matching of the party can be uh, very deep. So it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, so let's get into the chest here. Um, what did we have going on? Yeah, like I said, I feel like I've sold that there's not much here, but there's some nice stuff. Uh, so let's check it out, shall we? Oh, uh, let me get the autofocus. We'll probably need it for this. Uh, this is taking longer than it should. All right, there we go. It's all these little buttons and ugh. 
Okay, so let's get into it. First, uh, we found these last week. We're at a pawn shop. Uh, I love when pawn shops move all of their uh, video game stuff from one side of the store to the other because that usually means that something that has just been passed over in the uh, the like the back of the warehouse this has been passed over for for months maybe years finally they're 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 gonna put it out there just because they're looking at everything in a new light and usually when that happens you're gonna find you might find something one or two things interesting so there was a wall of PlayStation 3 Xbox 360 games you know the drill the PS2 games that have been there so long that even we aren't gonna grab them they're so common you know the drill but sitting on the counter right next to the wall almost as if someone had 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 looked through them and then passed on them which i i really doubt it's the case seeing what we have here um are some ps1 games maybe something else it's been a week since i've looked in this bag but i remember the ps1 games so let's take a look see what we got here um yeah, let's pick that. All right, so the first one here we have is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. The It's in, you know, I think I saw the casing first, and the case says Shadow Warrior. I don't know what Shadow Warrior is, but it sure sounds awesome. And if you look at the back, it's like a first-person ninja game. He's, like, throwing shurikens. <laughs> Why is it? it looks like uh, one of one of the weapons you can pick up is chopsticks. Can you see the the middle picture there? Guys using chopsticks. What is this game? This sounds amazing. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, though, I can tell it's a good thing it wasn't Shadow Warrior because this is a P Shadow Warrior is clearly a PC game. This was a CD-ROM game. That sounds awesome. Sounds very Duke Nukem of the East. Uh, but luckily, it was a game we can actually play. I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Yu-Gi-Oh! games can go anywhere. Looks like it's pretty beat up, but I think it might be playable. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! games go up and down the, the price spectrum. They can be really rare, or they can be junk. I don't know about Forbidden Memories, but it's PS1. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! And I knew we were going to get this for cheap. So I put it in the pile. Next one here. Uh, what do we have here? ATV Mania. It says six bucks up there, but that's from whatever resale store this Yahoo bought it from originally. Uh, ATV Mania, never even heard of it. Of course, it's relatively clean because who would want to play it? Uh, you know, ATV Off Road Fury for the PS2. People love that one. I never really got into ATV racing very much. But it was part of the lot, and it was cheap. Didn't have it, and I've never really even seen this one before, so we grabbed it. Uh, other PS2 games we got. PS1 games. Here we go. Final Fantasy Tactics. In the green... Why did it have to be green? Greatest Hits label. Always better to find black, game, black label games, but that's okay. Uh, th this certainly looks playable, a little dusty, but I think it's more dirty than scratched. I think it just needs to wipe that. It's complete. The, uh, the box art inside these PS1 games are always amazing. Always nice to get them complete. We have a copy of Tactics, uh, but it's always good to find another one for cheap. And what an amazing game. Turn-based strategy, I mean, very difficult but it'll, it'll eat up a lot of time. Great game. And then I was really excited to see this. This is a game we I've been looking for us to have in the hold for a long time. Uh, a while back, years ago, we found in an auction house a whole bunch of Final, Final Fantasy PS1 RPGs. Um, and pretty much every one that was on the... PlayStation 1 was in that lot, except this. What is it? Final Fantasy Chronicles. 
This is a part of the, the set where they started releasing some of the older Super Nintendo and Nintendo uh, Final Fantasies, re-releasing them for the PlayStation 1, putting additional content like full motion video cutscenes. And this is the one we didn't have. And I'm really excited because I, it's arguably the best one they put out because it's got um, Final Fantasy 4, otherwise known as Final Fantasy 6. Or Final Fantasy 3 here in the States. I believe that's right. Or was it Final Fantasy 2? Final Fantasy 2. Okay, so this is Final Fantasy 2. Uh, remastered uh, Final Fantasy 2 for the Super Nintendo in America. I know that some people know these numbers. Like, you know, Japan had different Final Fantasy order than we did. They got more for one thing. So this is called Final Fantasy because that's really what it was but to me you know I'm an American I grew up with the Super Nintendo as a kid so this is Final Fantasy 2 to me also on here is the other uh, like probably the biggest RPG that was on the Super Nintendo uh, Chrono Trigger a game about time travel very good game uh, I've it's been in the hole for a long time we have the Super Nintendo version Got it a long, long time ago for, uh, who knows, somewhere around $10 in a pawn shop. Uh, played it as a kid. This one's got all these additional cutscenes. I bet it's really good. So this is a great compilation, and it's really not that expensive to find. This this says $6. I think it's probably more these days. Who knows when, when they got this. But... Um, we got we got all these PlayStation One games for a dollar each, okay, buck each. So this was a dollar for this, great. And I believe that completes our our Final Fantasy PlayStation One collection. So that's pretty cool. And then one final oh no that there's a couple other things here we got the for a buck Sid Meier's Pirates for the Xbox. I think we had this disc only. For all I know, we have a copy of this already, but it's it's a pretty great game. Um, it's on quite a few systems, I, I suggest it. And then they had a couple of PSP games. I think they were asking for probably a dollar. I was about to say 50 cents, but I don't think so. A dollar on these, you got Ape Escape Academy. And Ape Escape on the Loose. I don't think that these are really worth much, but um, the Ape Escape games are pretty good. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bucks for that. That's pretty good, especially with the, the Final Fantasies in there. All right, and then we got one more little lot here. We found these today. How are we doing on time? How are we doing on time? Started at 35, so we got about 27 minutes left. Is that right? Somewhere around there. All right. Uh, if you have a question or comment, please leave it in the uh, the comment section. We're at the bottom of the hour. We'll address your mailbag questions at the end. Okay. So this place, the first thing I saw behind under glass sitting on its own in the video game section was this guy Pokemon Ruby which I don't think we have for some reason we seem to find Sapphire Pokemon Sapphire all the time but Pokemon Ruby I don't think we've ever found and it, it was sitting on its own in this kind of ah 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 we know what we got here it's all on its own that's why we labeled it for fifteen dollars okay Fourteen ninety nine. Well, obviously, the old captain's not going to pay that. But I did bring somebody over to the counter and ask about the Game Boy games because there was an additional bu bucket that I've been through, you know, time and time again. But every so often, they throw more in there. And I happened to see one that I know we would have wanted. So I said, how much are the Game Boy games? She said, 250 
I pulled four of them out of that bucket and Pokemon. Well, I pulled these first. I, I didn't approach the Pokemon thing yet. But she said they're about 250 I said, okay. So I grabbed these. Pull them out of this plastic for you. First one is uh, F-Zero, Mega Man F-Zero 2. Pretty decent Mega Man game. Bernstein Bear's Spooky Old Tree, uh, you know, probably terrible. This is nostalgia all the way. Uh, as a kid, that's not going to focus. As a kid, uh, I, uh, I really had a fondness for the Bernstein Bears. This is did my sister. This is made by Namco. I don't know how it is. I'm sure it's a 2D platformer. Um, but yeah, I've kind of been on the lookout for this one, mainly because I grew up with the book. Uh, what's this? I'm not even sure why I picked this one up. Kong. The Eighth Wonder of the World. That's what it says there in those very small lettering. King Kong, made by Ubisoft. Probably around the time of the, uh, the motion picture game and the, the Jack Black movie. I don't know how this is. Who knows? I don't even remember picking that one up. And then finally, we got uh, Banjo-Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge, which I'm pretty sure we picked up. This might be their third copy, uh, but this is actually kind of in demand. So Banjo-Kazooie. And not a bad game, really. It's... Banjo Kazumi uh, isometric style, so that's not bad. So there were four of these. She was doing for two fifty each. I said, "What about that other one there?" She's like, "Uh," she's looking at the the labels, and I'm like wincing. She's like, "Well, it's a Game Boy game. I mean, you shouldn't be paying any more than two fifty for Game Boy games, right?" And I'm like, "Right." So she. She said, yeah, it'll be 250 on this. I'm like, okay, well, I'm getting five of them. Can you do 10 for all five? She's like, yeah, right. So we got these, all five of these for 10 bucks. Pretty good deal. And then finally, uh, uh, I went to another place just down the street from there. Um, I don't know why. They had these for marked for four bucks each. A whole bunch of really crappy Game Boy Advance games. I talked them down to two each, and that's when I realized I really didn't want any of them. But if you're going to negotiate with somebody, get them to cut the price in half and then say, eh, you know, I changed my mind. I, it's hard for me to do. I feel like that's kind of crappy. So I got stuck with these crappy games. Two bucks each. We got uh, Crash Bandicoot 2. I don't know what that's. It looks terrible. I know. Uh, what, a, what a filthy label. It says, Crash Bandicoot 2 tranced. We don't have this. Who knows? Pitfall of the Mine Adventure. This is the port of the Super Nintendo Sega CD game. Uh, pretty, pretty unremarkable 2D platformer, but there is this one cave in the second level of this game where you'll see this is 16-bit graphics, so it's kind of lush. You know, you're in a jungle. Good animation. But then all of a sudden you see a cave, and sitting outside the cave is this four-bit pixelated scorpion just walking around. Totally out of place from everything else in the landscape. And if you go into the cave, you actually begin to play the original Atari 2600 Activision Pitfall. I always thought that was a really nice Easter egg in this game. A game that really is not that great. Uh, has one of my favorite Easter eggs of all time. So there you go. Pretty cool. And then finally, Simpsons Road Rage. This is, you know, I think it's Simpsons Does Crazy Taxi. It's on PS2. It's, oh my god, this game is everywhere. Every every game shelf in on the planet has at least a copy of Simpsons Road Rage for the PlayStation 2 or Xbox. It's sickening how common this game is. And uh, I don't know. I never played it. Might be all right, but I, if I'm going to play that game, I'll just play Crazy Taxi. I hear this one is like not, not nearly as good, but who knows. Uh, 
All right. So anyway, those were uh, three, three, those three games, two dollars each, six bucks. So what we do? We got six dollars on the three games we should have just left behind. Another ten dollars on the Pokemon lot. Uh, so sixteen, and then finally seven bucks on the Final Fantasy lot. Seventeen plus sixteen, twenty-three. So that's not bad. Not bad deal. Um, are we gonna sell any of this? My first thought was sell Pokemon Ruby, but now I'm starting to think we don't have it. So I don't know. We might sell the Banjo Kazooie. That'll probably get us maybe not much. Somewhere between seven and ten dollars might not even be worth it. But that would cut our our price in half. So better than just having a double sitting around, right? All right. So that's it. That's all we got there. Looks like we got about 20 minutes left in the voyage. Let's have a little more adventure in King of Dragons. We'll talk more about the classes and why this game uh, should get more attention than it deserves, in my opinion. We'll also talk about some of the problems with it. King of Dragons for the Super Nintendo. All right, right back into it. Thank God for pause. Oh, can I get my headphones? Yeah, right back into it until my headphones muck everything up. All right, here we go. So who did we cover? We talked about the cleric. Oh, let's talk about the dwarf because he'd come in really handy right about now. So the dwarf is a heavy hitter. He's got heavy defense, jumps well, uh, but his range is terrible because he's got little stubby arms. He's got a really bad swing, but what, one his real special move is he's so short. Oh, that was a mimic. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I forgot about those. Now this is a spell. If I hit it, then it's it'll clear the area. So you can kind of be patient with those. There's also a way to do, I'm gonna do it right now. If I press jump and attack at the same time. Oh no, there's there's a separate button. Right, but that takes health. You can you can cast spells, but they do take health. I wait for these guys to jump. Oop. So yeah, the coolest thing about the dwarf is he's so short that any archers in the game, anyone who throws a ranged attack, can't hit him. It'll go over his head. Uh, but therein lies the problem because if you read any site or instruction manual, it'll tell you that. And if you play the arcade version on Capcom Marquee Classics, that will occur. But I was so nerdy when I got this game that I tried everybody out and I wanted to learn everybody's special. So I started digging into the, you know, scanned versions of the instruction manual, digging into Wikipedia, and they're telling me, yeah, the dwarf, he's immune to range attacks. Well, he may be in the arcade, ugh, but he's not in this version. So it's the one glaring problem with this version. I still recommend this because of the manual shielding. Three of your characters are really going to depend on that. Oh, this Hydra's awesome. I'm pretty good at him too. Okay. All right, Raz, shut up. That's that's. You don't ever say you're good at anything, Raz. You're good at killing an hour. That's that's it. Oh. Meanwhile, the green one's sitting in the wings. Oh, yeah, there we go. No, oh, oh my God. Okay, blue one's down. The green one's awesome because he shoots acid. I just thought that was green. Green dragons are my favorite just because they're always shooting poison, really dirty stuff. You know, I think that's cool. All right, red one's down. Doing a go. Oh. Let's see if we can clean sweep them. Oh! God! <laughs> Speak of the devil, huh? What a jerk! All right. Are you gonna come over here? Oh my God! Look, I just want to make it known. You see how strong the shield is? If you're good, you can really avoid almost anything in this. But you got to be patient. I, you know, I, in my defense, 
We've only got 20 minutes with this game. I want you to be able to see some. Especially the next level. I think it's the next level. That's like my favorite. I really want you to see that. Alright, here we go. Oh, right. That's the head boss, Gildas. He is a bread dragon. But, you know, obviously there's not... Okay, this is cool. We gotta play this one. Because, look, we're on a ship. Yeah! And it's really cool because the whole fight takes place right here in the confines of this little vessel. I think that's really cool, especially when you get two people involved. Ugh. Oh, my God. All right, let's get, get into these barrels. Oh, a new shield. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, that... Ah! The spell turned them into frogs. Ha ha ha. I know there's another barrel here. Can I, oh, okay, bananas. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh! There's limited continues, but there's also hidden continues in uh, in this game. There's three continue power-ups found in the world. I know where one of them is. You know, you'll notice uh, there's not a lot of comboing here. It's really just one swing, and that's all you get. I think some people probably would turn their nose up at that, but I think the reason I like it is I think it really promotes... Ugh. Close quarters combat. You really have to utilize that shield appropriately. You have to make your hits count. Ooh, we got a gem there. Who are we missing? The wizard. Uh, the wizard is much like the elf. Can't block. Low health. But every level, every t every time he, he gets a new scepter, you know, we've been picking up new maces. Every time he gets a new scepter, the cool thing is, is his spell actually dramatically changes. So he'll get things like flamethrowers, lightning bolts, and, uh, you know, there are people who know this game who argue, you know, one one of the lower level wands is better than the highest level wand. You know, that's up to you and your play style. Uh, but that's the best thing ugh, about this game is, man, all the guys are very easy to learn, but they all play to different play styles. And I tend to tor gravitate toward the cleric, especially in a two-player scenario. I love the idea of being able to help my friend by picking up food. Uh, and I like uh, bludgeoning weapons. I like maces and stuff. Let's go one more round here. And get to the end of this. Oh, that is the end. <laughs> I think this is one... I think this is another... Uh, Minotaur here. There is a little bit of re monster re boss recycling, but that also has to do with the fact that there's so many levels in this. There's there's almost like 15 levels in this game. I've gotten all the way to, to the Red Dragon. I never beat him. But the the variety in the geography and oh. Whew, is really cool and they do well there is some some recycling of characters oh Ooh. whoa whoa oh, I wish I could do a spell right now oh I can okay but now I'm out of health uh, they they do save some really cool monsters for later down the line and I won't spoil those for you but it's pretty much a who's who of, you know, Lord of the Rings, uh, bestia bestiarities. All right, let's take this guy out. Ugh. <laughs> let's, let's suck. Let's see if we do any better with the shield this time. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Ah! Oh man. I'm just wailing on him. Ugh. <laughs> I 
I'm so, I suck. I su it's so embarrassing. I should have played the archer. There we go. That's not bad. All right, let's wrap it up there. Oh, where we're still going? Where are we going to? Oh, is this, okay, this is a tower. All right, we're done. That's it. Thank you, uh, thank you, King of Dragons. That was a blast. There's more to see. Trust me. Much more to see in this, this game, and the best way to see it, as always, is with a friend by your side on the couch. Really fun to fight with, uh, you know, again, the, the treasure means everything here. It's experience. So fighting with your friend over the treasure is a lot of fun, too. Okay, uh, that's about it. Uh, let's see if we have a question over here in the, uh, the mailbag. Yes, oh, first mate business, save of the day. Got us a question here. What do we have today? He says, uh, Cap'n, any news about the Galleon show that you would like to share with us fans? Uh, we're going to keep doing shows. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, we're thinking about going 24 hours. I usually don't like to say things like that because I feel like it dates the show. I like these shows to be independent of one another. Uh, kind of like, you know, when I was a kid, I would uh, come home from school and watch DuckTales. And every episode took place in a different location, took place with a different cast of characters, you know, sometimes Scrooge wouldn't be involved, sometimes, you know, Launchpad wouldn't be involved. Uh, but all the, the, the episodes pretty much ran, you know, wrapped things up enough where the next week you'd basically be starting from scratch again. That's how I try to keep our voyages so that people can, um can go to the, where they please, you know, do they want to go to Alaska, do they want to go to Saigon, do they want to go to Tokyo, Japan, you know, it's up to them, it doesn't matter what order they see things, and so, uh, he, he left one other question here, uh, yeah, he's really, he's really put me on the spot, uh, Captain, rumor has it you celebrated a birthday last weekend, Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I, I'll be, uh, I was 40, I am 40 now. The ripe old age of 40. I remember when I was uh, 20, 18, I could, I, 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 I had it in my head like there was, there's nothing worse in the world than being in your 40s. Just to me, just seemed like the worst time of a person's life. There's nothing good about it. Now here I am. My first week of 40, I'm sitting on a pirate ship filled with some of the greatest video games of all time, and I'm getting to share with you. So hey, maybe 40 won't be so bad after all. I guess we'll just have to sail the seas and find out, won't we? All right, well, thanks, Biz. Thanks for bailing us out. Ship was about to implode because people can't leave us. Is there a question over here? Wait, we may have one more question. Hold on, let me check. I'm going to say I doubt it. Let's see. No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No. See, people... I'll ask for questions if people just like it. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a blast. Whether or not we have a question... Uh, we're going to keep this boat in the water for you so that, you know, one day when maybe you're down in the dumps, uh, we can sail you to uh, happier waters. All right, so where's my drink? Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Who knows where, no, who knows when, but I know one thing. We're going to do it together. So until then, I will and I do to ye Spanish maidens. Ah, well, and adieu, ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to sail on to malice, and we may never see ye fair ladies again.
Yeah, I celebrated my 18th birthday. I can vote now. Keep your powder dry, mateys.